When the atomic bomb exploded, it felt like the computer itself shook. The people on the other team were dumbfounded. They sat there in shock, completely defeated. Damon was so good at stars, he'd gotten to level 12 so quickly. The other team didn't even have time to react. The final bomb was very powerful. Impossible. How did we lose? The other team was completely stunned. What Damon and the others didn't know was that a professional player who went by Nick Lightning was amongst them today. One of the best in the country. He'd been invited by the group to help them out. He'd expected to easily beat anyone they played against. This was too shocking. Damon was easily at a professional level. After winning, Damon looked at Alex, remembering the bet. The girl with the bob haircut and the others also looked at Alex. One of the girls thought about asking if they could just call off the bet, but she kept picturing how Damon had beat them so brutally just a few minutes ago. He was too intimidating. Every time she opened her mouth to say something, she just shut it again. Alex scowled, his face full of reluctance and humiliation. Damon smiled. Remember, you said you'd do anything I wanted if I beat you. You do remember saying that, right? This made Alex so angry that he gritted his teeth, but he couldn't deny it. It was clear from his expression that he felt insulted. Damon enjoyed watching him squirm. It was just a game. He didn't understand why other people got so up in arms about it, but he decided he would get something out of it since Alex had offered. He knew the boys on the other team were older than him, Liam, and Emmett. They were college kids Liam had met once at a video game tournament in Queens. What I want is for you to get us into the pool hall downtown. You guys are minors. That's supposed to be 21 and over. We don't want to drink. We just want to hang out and play pool. And besides, you lost the bet. Damon looked at Alex straight on. It was notoriously easy to get into that particular place as a minor. The security guy would let kids in as long as they didn't order drinks. Because of that, they probably wouldn't even need the older boy's help. But Damon wanted to take advantage of having won the bet. Alex rolled his eyes. Fine, we'll meet you there. Alex and the others logged out and disappeared from their screen. Damon, you were really amazing today. I've got to hand it to you. Damon just shrugged, grabbed his jacket, and headed for the door. Liam and Emmett followed behind, looking at each other with expressions of admiration. Today, the two of them had finally seen Damon at the top of his game. They hadn't known he was capable of that. When they got to the pool hall, Alex and the others met them out front and got them in without a problem. As soon as they got inside, they went to the pool table to play. They were tired from playing video games, and it felt good to stand up and stretch. Just a few minutes later, the door of the pool hall suddenly opened, and a group of nice-looking young people walked in. Liam's eyes lit up. Hey, that's Avery! Sure enough, they saw Avery in the middle of the group. Although Avery was undoubtedly the most dazzling person there, they were all pretty and well-dressed. These were clearly people from Avery's new, privileged life. People didn't look like that in Damon's neighborhood. A few of them even carried instrument cases, mostly guitars or violins. Hey, Avery, are you here to play pool too? Emmett said, waving in her direction. Avery smiled sweetly and said, Yes, these are my friends. They play here sometimes, and I just came with them. As she spoke, she looked at Damon and Liam. She hesitated for a moment, then nodded at them. Even though they'd grown up together, ever since Damon confessed, the relationship between them had been a little awkward. Avery, are these friends of yours? An extremely handsome boy asked, with a faint hint of irony in his voice. Yeah, Avery nodded, thinking about how to introduce everyone. They were my classmates before I moved. For some reason, she felt a little embarrassed and added, This is Damon. He's a great singer. Oh, really? The handsome boy casually glanced at Damon and his eyes swept over his body. He sneered slightly, looking disdainful. Avery felt a little awkward when she saw the handsome boy's disdainful look. After all, her friends from her old neighborhood weren't on the same level as she was. She felt bad for thinking it, but she was slightly scared they'd bring down her status in the other friend's eyes. Even though Avery wanted to respect where she came from, she still cared about her status and how others perceived her. Her face turned slightly cold as she looked at Damon and the others. She usually tried her best not to let her old and new friends meet each other. Two other girls who had come in with Avery's group had overheard the conversation and glanced toward Damon as they whispered amongst themselves. 
He's a really good singer. He looks cute. Look at his eyes. They're really sparkly. Avery, introduce us to him. Avery smiled and didn't say anything. Damon sensed that Avery didn't really want to keep associating with them, so he turned back to the pool table. Liam and Emmett were setting up a game. Damon sat by the table with a cue in his hand, watching the two play. Damon was pretty good at pool. Liam and Emmett weren't on the same level. Most of the time, Liam and Emmett played against each other while Damon watched. He acted as the judge. Avery walked toward the pool table where her friends had also started a game. The handsome boy was really good. He was beating everyone else in the group. He actually started to get bored because some of them were so easy to beat. He leaned against the table with a drink in his hand as he played. Avery could tell that the handsome boy was bored, so she walked over to Liam and Emmett and said, Emmett, Liam, how about you guys play a couple of games with Matt? Liam and Emmett looked at each other. Liam shrugged. He didn't particularly want to play against this Matt kid, but he'd do anything for Avery. Okay. As Liam walked over to his table, the handsome boy, Matt, slowly stood up. He wasn't in any hurry. He went to get a glass of water from the bar and left Liam and Emmett awkwardly at the table. After he finished drinking, he said, Avery, are you sure they'll be a good match? I'm too good to play with rookies. One of the girls beside him explained, Matt doesn't just play with anyone. Avery had an embarrassed look on her face as she softly asked, Liam, you're pretty good, aren't you? Now she was afraid they wouldn't be enough of a challenge for Matt. Liam and Emmett were annoyed. Emmett glanced at Liam and rolled his eyes. However, seeing Avery's pleading look, Liam helplessly said, Yeah, I'm all right. Oh, really? Matt said lightly. In that case, why don't we make a bet? This'll be fun. Liam and Emmett's expression changed. How about $10 per round to the winner? Liam and Emmett were slightly hesitant. They didn't want to gamble. After all, they weren't rich, and $10 a game could add up quickly. Matt had a mocking look on his face. Oh, you can't afford to play? Then forget it. Avery, why are you friends with these guys? You should stop hanging out with them. They're bringing you down. When Matt insulted her old friends, Avery's pretty face suddenly turned pale, and she looked very embarrassed. Fine, let's put money on it. Liam felt the money in his pocket and forced himself to agree. He cared about his reputation and wasn't going to let this boy make him look like a fool. He especially didn't want to be looked down on by a beautiful girl like Avery. Liam had exactly $30 in his pocket today. He thought it was enough for a few games, but after three rounds, Liam had lost all the money he had. Not only did he lose every round, but he lost by a lot. Liam had nothing left to lose. Before the next game started, he tried to sound casual as he said, Hey man, why don't you play a few rounds? He was too embarrassed to say that he couldn't afford to keep playing. Emmett swallowed as he felt the $50 in his pocket, but forced himself to step up to the table. After two rounds, Emmett only had $30 left. He didn't dare play another game. He didn't want to be down any more money. You don't have the money? If you don't have the money, go to an ATM and take it out. I'll wait. Matt counted the more than $300 in his hand as he shamelessly provoked Emmett. What are you waiting for? He taunted. The group of boys who'd gathered around Matt laughed. Everyone could see that if they continued playing, Liam and Emmett would lose even the shirts off their backs, but their pride was worth more than money. It wasn't smart, but Matt's words made Liam so angry that he clenched his fists. Let me play, I have some money. Damon didn't want to get involved in this mess, but he saw that Liam and Emmett had lost everything. He felt he needed to jump in and save his friends before things got any worse. You'll play? Matt looked at Damon in puzzlement. Liam and Emmett were delighted. They knew that Damon was a better player than they were. They were pretty sure he stood a chance against Matt. But Damon had always been the poorest amongst the three of them. How much money could he possibly have on him? What if he lost? It would be too embarrassing if he didn't have the money to pay up. Avery frowned. She didn't know what Damon was thinking. The girl next to her seemed a little excited at the prospect of Damon playing. She leaned in and said to Avery, Hey, is he good? He looks like he'd be good. Avery said, I'm not sure. I think he'll probably do fine. She didn't sound confident. Honestly, I don't care how good he is. I just want to watch him play. The girl said with a smile. Matt looked Damon up and down and said, 
You seem like you might be new to this. I don't need to go over the rules, do I? Matt sneered. None of Damon's clothes were designer. Matt wondered if this guy would even be able to pay up if he lost. Okay, but let's change the rules slightly. Damon took out a leather wallet from his pocket. There was a thick stash of bills inside. He didn't know exactly how much he had, but it was definitely enough for a few games. Ten per game isn't enough. How about twenty dollars per round? The group instantly sucked in a collective breath. The stakes had been raised. Damon was basically offering Matt extra money. He was almost guaranteed to lose. The girl with the ponytail leaned into Avery's ear again and whispered, Is this guy rich? Avery's eyebrows lightly furrowed as she shook her head. The girl with the ponytail didn't understand what she meant by that. Even Liam and Emmett were shocked by Damon. They didn't know where he'd gotten so much money, and they definitely knew Damon's family was poor. What if he lost? Liam pulled Damon to the side and told him to be careful. Even if Damon was good at pool, Matt was probably better. And Damon wasn't rich. Money wasn't worthless to him the way it was to these other kids. Liam and Emmett were worried about what would happen if he lost too much money. But Damon looked unconcerned. He quickly counted and found he had $200 in his wallet. His father had given him the money for doing so well on his practice tests and in his classes. The money came from his holiday bonus at work, and he'd been so proud of the gift. Damon appreciated it and had planned on saving up to buy a new guitar. And now he was willing to place it all on a bet. He knew Avery realized what a sum like this meant to him and his family. He couldn't help but feel slightly betrayed by her. As Damon walked toward the table, Matt's eyes lit up. There was a glint of cruelty in them. All right then, are you sure you want to go that big? Matt asked, a hint of sarcasm in his voice. Damon shook his head. No, it's more fun when the stakes are higher. Okay then, let's quit talking and start playing. When I get this money, dinner's on me, Matt said confidently. Matt went first, and then it was Damon's turn. Matt was definitely really good. He had actually been taught by a professional pool player, one of his parents' friends, when he was young. When he was a kid, he even wanted to become a professional pool player, but it turned out he wasn't good enough for that. And as he got older, he got more into music, so he'd given up the pool dream. But even so, he was still way better than an amateur player. It was Damon's turn again. Damon had really good technique. He held the cue skillfully, and his form was impeccable as he bent over the table. His face became serious as he lined up his shots. Every time he hit the ball, there was a strong clack sound, and the ball rolled in a perfect arc toward its target. The girls standing around the table couldn't help but cheer for Damon secretly. His aura was magnetic. The girls had come with Matt and Avery, but at this moment, they were enthralled with Damon. They secretly hoped that Damon would win the match. Damon lost the first round, but only by a very small margin. He took out a $20 bill and gave it to Matt. Liam quietly protested, telling Damon to forget the competition. Damon shook his head. By the time they got to the second round, Damon was familiar with Matt's style of play. He went in with greater confidence and began to show his strength. Damon won the second round. He also won the third round. He'd won $40 so far. He won the fourth round for a total of $60. He also won the fifth round, bringing his winnings up to $80. The way the crowd looked at Damon had changed. Some of the girls had started openly cheering for him. The boys watched with open mouths. The more games Damon won, the angrier Matt became. Damon could tell that the rich guy was humiliated. He stifled a laugh as Matt turned to his group of friends and asked, Who is this guy? Is somebody playing a prank on me right now? There is no way this is real. Just as he was about to say something else, the group who'd been playing stars with Damon and his friends earlier walked over to the table. Once they'd gotten Damon and the guys inside the hall, they'd broken away and started their own game, but they sauntered over when they heard the commotion. Matt hadn't noticed them earlier and fixed his gaze on Alex. For a second, it seemed like he no longer cared about losing to Damon. He greeted the new group. Yo, Alex, what are you doing here? Matt said. In Alex's presence, Matt's entire demeanor changed. He looked submissive, and even hunched his shoulders in an effort to make himself smaller. The kids who didn't know Alex were shocked when they saw the way Matt behaved around him, but the people who knew him understood. 
Some people were surprised that Alex even knew Matt. That showed how many different circles Alex ran in. Some of the girls gasped and whispered amongst themselves and even began thinking about asking Matt to introduce them to Alex. Alex frowned. What's going on? He asked. He was looking at Damon, but his question was directed to Matt. We just ran into a few idiots who were pretending to be rich. They obviously can't pay up when they lose. And now this one's trying to trick me and take me for all I'm worth. He's cheating somehow. Alex's friend Frank came over. Alex, chill. It's not worth getting into the middle of this. His friends all knew that Alex liked to stir up trouble. Damon said coldly, Have you had enough, or do you need me to beat you again? Did I give you permission to talk? Matt snapped his fingers, and a group of boys surrounded Damon. The girls were so scared that their faces turned pale. Avery pulled at Matt's sleeve and wanted to tell him not to do anything. Even though she'd been embarrassed by Damon earlier, he was still her friend. But Matt shrugged her off. What do you care? This is between us guys. Stay out of it. Alex, who was still angry about losing to Damon at Stars earlier, was eager to watch him get beaten up. He wanted to see someone teach this guy a lesson. Alex, did you forget who lost a bet earlier today? Damon wore a sly expression. Alex was stunned. He saw the sudden fierceness in Damon's eyes. He tried to ignore Damon, but everyone had heard what the other boy had said. They waited for Alex to deny losing, but he didn't. They could tell by Alex's furious expression and the way he shifted his weight that Damon was telling the truth. Alex, one of the richest and most arrogant boys they knew, had lost a bet to this nobody? The other kids were clearly shocked. The girls whispered amongst themselves again, glancing between Damon and Alex with amazement. How had Damon and Alex met? They were from such different worlds. And what kind of bet could Alex possibly have lost? Earlier, Damon had been surprised at how easily Alex could put his pride aside and kept up his end of the bargain. But now that they had an audience, Alex was behaving like a coward. He needed to man up and own his defeat. Damon looked at Alex and said faintly, I'm still not done cashing in on that bet. Didn't you say you'd do anything I wanted for the rest of the day? I think you can guess what I want you to do now. Humiliation flashed in Alex's eyes. He clenched his fists, drew his arm back, and punched Matt square in the face. Ah! Matt was caught off guard. Alex, what the... Bro, why did you hit me? He asked, confused. Sorry, man. Damon's in charge of me today. Alex said as he went in for another punch. Alex took all his anger about losing to Damon out on Matt. Poor Matt became a punching bag. Frank said tentatively, Alex, bro, that's enough. He gets it, man. But Alex kept punching him. Matt didn't have any time to defend himself. He was still in shock at what was happening. The group of kids was stunned. No one could believe that Damon had gotten Alex to beat up Matt. They all looked at Damon with a mix of fear and confusion. Who was this guy who had Alex wrapped around his finger? Alex was really rich, and all the other kids wanted to be friends with him. One of Avery's friends was currently trying to get close to Emily, the girl with the bob haircut, as a way of getting closer to Alex. Since Alex's family was so rich and influential, it wasn't easy to get into their circle. And now Damon had come in out of nowhere, and Alex was doing whatever he said? It was a huge shock. The girls eyed Damon in admiration. Whispering on the sidelines of the fight, they asked Avery how Damon knew Alex. Was Damon also a rich kid? But Avery had no idea how Damon had met Alex, let alone how he had such power over him. She couldn't fathom how that had happened. Meanwhile, one of Matt's friends tried to step in to defend him, and Alex started beating him up too. Seeing that it was now two against one, Frank gave up on trying to stop the fight and instead started helping Alex corral the other two boys. Matt and his friend were losing badly. Eventually, all they could do was hold their arms over their heads and take the beating. When they couldn't take it anymore, both boys began to cry, scream, and beg for mercy. Avery couldn't stand it. She stood up and said to Damon, Please tell them to stop. If they keep going, someone's going to die. Avery still didn't understand Damon's relationship to Alex, but she figured Damon was the only one who could help right now. She also knew if anything terrible happened to Matt and Damon was found culpable, his family wouldn't be able to afford legal fees. Damon seemed to agree with her. He stepped forward and said, All right, you guys, that's enough.
By the time Alex and Frank let up, Matt and his friend Andrew were already covered in bruises. Both of them regretted provoking Damon, but they'd had no way of knowing how badly it would turn out. After completing his assignment, Alex turned to Damon and asked, How's that? Damon shrugged and looked unimpressed. Not bad, but I think you could have done better. He might as well keep up the act. Damon's nonchalance made Alex angry, but he swallowed his pride and just nodded. Frank looked at Damon with disdain. He was clearly extremely upset. He looked like he wanted to beat up Damon next, but Damon didn't care. As Matt struggled to get to his feet, Alex pointed a finger at him and growled, You better keep a low profile from here on out or there will be trouble. Okay, dude, just leave me alone. Matt coughed, weak and embarrassed. Alex snorted. He walked out of the pool hall without another glance at Damon or any of the others. Damon saw no reason to stay any longer, so he left too. Liam and Emmett followed after him, looking at each other in complete shock. No one dared to stop them. The whole room was still amazed. Liam and Emmett could barely recognize their friend these days. Damon had been so calm in such a tense situation. He hadn't even looked flustered or afraid, and he'd stood up to both Matt and Alex so fearlessly. They were relieved he'd been able to handle the situation. It could have ended very badly for them. They could have easily been beaten up like Matt and Frank. Liam and Emmett definitely wouldn't have been able to defend themselves. Liam remembered Matt's resentful and terrified eyes and felt so grateful he hadn't been him. Liam and Emmett felt adrenaline still coursing in their veins. They chatted together while Damon stayed silent. Suddenly, Damon realized he wasn't wearing his coat. He remembered taking it off before sitting to play pool with Matt. He'd forgotten it in the pool hall. He told Liam and Emmett to go ahead without him. Then he turned around and went back to the pool hall to get the coat. When he got there, he found that no one had moved his coat. He grabbed it and headed toward the door. Suddenly, he heard a scream from around the corner. It sounded like Alex. He peeked around the corner and saw Alex and a few others surrounded by a group of rough-looking young men. A man with a scar on his face held a knife in his hand. He gestured to Alex and said, Stop showing off. None of you are getting out of here. At least a dozen men surrounded Alex and the others. Alex liked to talk a big game around younger students, but they were really just rich kids themselves. They didn't have any street smarts. Alex looked terrified. What are you doing? Damon yelled, stepping out from the shadows. He didn't like Alex, but he respected him for having kept up his end of the bet. The man who'd been threatening Alex and the others turned to Damon, saying, Who are you? Are you trying to get beat up? What do you think you're doing here? One of the men, who looked younger than the rest, broke off from the group and stood in front of Damon, blocking his way. Get lost, he said. Alex and the others were surprised Damon was standing up for them. Frank said disdainfully, Get lost, this has nothing to do with you. Frank knew they were in trouble, but he still didn't want to accept Damon's help. Damon said, You guys are clearly out of your element here. Alex helped me, so I'll return the favor. One of the girls said, Don't act like we're your friends now just because you want to bet. We don't associate with people like you. Alex could tell Damon didn't know who he was or how rich and influential his family was. Damon was clearly not in any of the same social circles as him. Otherwise, he never would have made Alex hold up his end of the bet. His ignorance made him fearless. Jeff, the guy who'd been threatening Alex and now Damon, was getting angrier by the minute. That's enough talking. Get them. Before anyone could move, Damon sprang into action. He pinned Jeff's arms behind his back, pushed him to the ground, and kicked him in the stomach, incapacitating him. Once Jeff was out of the way, Damon started attacking the rest of the men surrounding Alex and his friends. One by one, they ended up on the floor. On his knees in agony, Jeff watched the scene around him in disbelief. There were tears in his eyes from having the wind knocked out of him. He'd gone from the powerful one to the guy on the floor, defeated, before he could even process what had happened. At this moment, Alex, Frank, Emily, and the other girl, Sarah, watched Damon in disbelief, their mouths open and their eyes wide. It was like a scene from an action movie. Under Damon's attack, Jeff and the others were unable to fight back at all. Damon had saved Alex and his friends. Jeff and the rest of his group were scrambling to gather themselves and get out of the pool hall. Damon kicked Jeff's leg as he ran out, causing him to stumble. Once the last of the men were gone, Damon clapped his hands. You're safe. Alex and the others were still in shock. After a while, Alex calmed down and said, Thank you, but... 
Man, who are you? How did you do that? Frank said, I'm sorry for how we acted earlier. Emily said excitedly, Damon, where did you learn to fight like that? You've got to teach me. She couldn't believe Damon had fought a dozen people at once. He was so amazing, it was almost like watching a video game in real life. Damon laughed and shook his head. I don't think it's something that can really be taught. Alex looked at Damon intently. After a few moments of silence, he said faintly, Do you want to hang out with us sometime? Damon looked at Alex carefully, then shook his head. I don't know. I'm going to head home now. Maybe I'll see you guys around. After Damon left, Sarah turned to Alex with an annoyed look. Alex, I know it's cool that he can fight, but you can't just invite anyone to join our group, especially not guys with no money. Do you know what people would do to be able to hang out with us? Shut up, Sarah, Alex said. Alex was disappointed Damon didn't want to be in their group, but he understood why. Damon knew his place, and he knew it wouldn't work out in the long run if he started hanging out with people so much richer than him. His friends had barely been able to afford to lose a few rounds of pool. Damon wouldn't be able to keep up with them in the long run. It was one thing to be an impressive fighter, but it was another to have been born rich. Damon couldn't change his whole social status just based on a few skills, and he knew it. The fight at the pool hall was forgotten by the time winter break had ended. Throughout the spring semester, the song Time Flies consistently rose in the charts week after week until it reached the top three. This was huge for a rookie. It seemed like the artist of Time Flies was poised to be the next big thing in the music industry. The speed with which the song had risen through the charts was unprecedented. Those working in the music industry wondered if Time Flies would be able to sustain its position at the top of the charts through the holiday season and into the winter. And it did. When spring came, its popularity actually increased even more because the lyrics were so fitting for graduation season. Time Flies hovered at number three on the charts for months, but never became number one or two. Every time the numbers climbed for Time Flies, it seemed like the numbers of the songs in the top two positions climbed too. Time Flies couldn't catch up, no matter how many times it was played and downloaded. But Damon didn't care about those things. He was just happy he was able to get into the top three. Just before the start of college admission season, Damon took the money he'd earned from beating Matt at pool and treated Liam and Emmett to lunch. He also signed up for an after-school coding class and thought about getting a part-time job. He knew his father was taking on extra hours at work to pay for his tuition in the fall. He had even started selling cigarettes on the side. Damon felt that he should share the burden with his father. The place where Damon studied coding and IT was called Gotham Technology Center. They offered free classes for young people, and lots of high school graduates who hadn't gone to college took them. There was good money to be made in the field. There were three teachers at the training center. One of them was called Will, and he was a third-year computer science student at a local university. He taught in the evenings after school. Damon was already good with computers, and the super brain he'd developed from the lake incident made it even easier for him to pick up new skills with impressive speed. He quickly became one of the best programming students in the class. Damon's high skill level attracted William's attention. William gave him extra assignments and taught him more complicated operations since he was so far ahead of the rest of the class. He even asked Damon to help him on some of his own programming projects. William freelanced as a video game programmer and made good money. Damon helped William figure out some bugs in the code of one of the games he was working on, and William was very impressed. He gave him $100 for his help. Damon felt a surge of excitement when he held the money in his hand. After all, it was the first time he'd earned money through legitimate means. It wasn't that much, but it meant a lot to him. The second half of the school year passed somewhat uneventfully. Damon kept a low profile, though he made sure his grades were stellar. In the early spring, students started getting their college acceptance letters, and high school students started announcing which seniors would be getting awards at the end of the year. On the day when a lot of the college admissions decisions were supposed to come out, it was extremely hot, especially for the time of year. The power grid got overheated, and some parts of the city ended up without power, including Liam, Emmett, and Damon's neighborhood. They didn't have internet at home, so they wouldn't be able to check their admissions decisions. Liam called Emmett and Damon and said they should go to the library downtown, which still had power and internet to check. When they got to the library, there was a sea of people inside. Some were using the internet like them, and some just needed a place to get out of the heat. 
there were lots of students who'd come to check on college admissions. From time to time, they would see one of them celebrating, getting angry, even crying. I got in. I have to run home and tell my mom. I didn't. I can't believe it. How could they not take me? I didn't get into any schools. What am I supposed to do now? What will I do for all next year if I'm not away at college? I got on the wait list. Are you talking about SCAD? No, I'm talking about the Culinary Institute. What? How did I get into Stanford but not USC? It makes no sense. I can't believe it. I didn't think my scores were good enough. Amidst the chaos, Damon and the other two finally found a few open computers and sat down. They were all very quiet as they logged into the application portals, and a sense of anticipation hung between them. Just as the application status portal for his first choice school was about to load, an error message popped up on Damon's screen. Damon looked over and saw the same error message on Emmett and Liam's computers. Maybe there were too many people using the library system at once. Damon, Liam, and Emmett just sat staring at the error message impatiently. Finally, Liam let out a cheer. Damon turned toward Liam's screen and saw that the error message was gone, replaced by a college acceptance letter. Damon got up from his chair and read over Liam's shoulder. It was from a good school, too. Damon congratulated Liam, who was dancing with joy in his chair. Emmett offered a half-hearted congratulations, but also looked envious. <sighs> Mine's still not loading. Suddenly, the error message on Emmett's screen flashed and was replaced by an application status portal. Emmett clicked the admissions tab and saw the word congratulations at the top of the screen. He had done it. It wasn't a top school, but it wasn't bad either. It was one of Emmett's targets, and he was glad to at least know he'd gotten in somewhere. Liam and Emmett heaved a sigh of relief and waited for Damon. Unfortunately, the error message was still on Damon's screen. While they were waiting for the error message to disappear from Damon's screen, Liam and Emmett checked their other colleges. Even after they'd logged into all the portals, Damon's screen still hadn't made progress. Just after Liam had finished checking all his schools, his mom called his cell phone. He put her on speaker. So, honey, how'd it go? Come on and tell us the good news. Emmett, are you there too? Emmett's mother's voice came out of Liam's phone. The mothers were friends and had been so nervous that they were waiting together to hear the news. Liam patted Damon's shoulders and said with a smile, Sorry, man, our moms are going to have a conniption if we don't get home and tell them what's up. Good luck. Let us know how you do. Damon nodded helplessly. After watching the two of them leave, he was still trying hard to refresh the page. As Damon was waiting alone at the library computer for the error message to disappear from his screen, two girls walked in and took Liam and Emmett's seats. They were also there to check their college acceptances. They logged in with no problems. Damon's luck was just terrible. Damon had heard one of the girls exclaim beside him, Maria, you're amazing. That's one of the best schools in the country. As the girls loudly squealed in joy, almost everyone in the library looked in their direction. Well, sounds like she must have gotten in somewhere good. Someone at the other table said, a trace of envy in their voice. Another boy yelled out, Congrats! from across the room. The girl sitting next to her said, Your parents are going to be so happy! In the midst of all that, Maria stayed very quiet. She'd been an outstanding student since she was young. She was happy but not surprised by what had just occurred. Still, when she heard other people congratulating her, a faint smile appeared on her face. And of course, she should be proud. She'd gotten into one of the country's top universities. A few other students came over to look at her screen over her shoulder. Only Damon paid no attention to her because he was still trying his best to check his own results. While the girl pretended not to notice others' reactions, she was surprised by Damon's lack of interest. It made her a little angry that he didn't acknowledge her accomplishment when so many other people had. She figured he was just a bad student who was probably jealous, thinking that made her feel a little better. At this point, it had been more than 20 minutes, and there was still an error message on Damon's screen. Damon had also attracted the attention of the onlookers. I've been watching that guy for half an hour and his computer's still messed up. Why doesn't he just move to another computer? Maybe he's afraid to look. Yeah, he doesn't really look like a good student. After a while, the crowd gradually dispersed, but Maria and her best friend stayed. Maria's best friend still hadn't checked her own admissions decisions yet. All of a sudden, the error message disappeared from Damon's screen, and his application portal started loading. He'd also gotten into one of the best universities in the country. When he saw that, the corner of Damon's mouth raised slightly. 
no matter how much he'd struggled in school in the past, the hard work he'd put in during his last years had paid off. It was like a huge weight had been taken off his shoulders and he could finally relax. Since he was already in the library, he decided to quickly check his email since the internet was probably still out at home. He saw a new email at the top of his inbox and opened it, assuming it would just be another school announcement. It informed him that he was receiving an award from the district for outstanding academic achievement and high test scores. Apparently, he'd scored in the top 1% of all students on the SATs, specifically on the science subject tests. For that, he was also being recognized as the top science scholar. Damon could hardly believe how much his life had changed in just a matter of months. As he walked out of the library, he felt like he was walking on air. Maria and her best friend were still waiting for the best friend's screen to load. While they waited, Maria realized that the boy beside him had left, but it looked like he hadn't closed out the tabs on his computer. She went over to take a look and saw his acceptances and the email announcing his awards. When Maria saw Damon's email, her face contorted with shock and anger. She let out a gasp of surprise. What? He's the top science scholar and he's getting the district award? She was so loud in her shock that everyone in the library's computer area heard her once again. Maria's best friend leaned over to look at the screen. She also gasped. Then, a few kids who were next to her also moved closer to see what all the fuss was about. Other students in the library saw a group gathering and came over to see what was going on. They started whispering to each other. Then, their discussions got louder and louder and more animated. As the news of what Maria had seen spread, Everyone in the computer area started talking over each other. The students were buzzing. Some were angry. Some were confused. They were all surprised. What? He's the top science scholar? Who is he even? Wow, good on him. That's a really hard award to get. He's a legend. I've been the top of the class in science since kindergarten, and they didn't pick me? How did they pick this guy? He must have known someone on the committee. What are you talking about? Stop lying, you've never been top of the class. I was first in kindergarten. My parents thought I was gonna be a genius, but look how I turned out. At that moment, Damon rode his bicycle back towards his block, completely unaware of what was going on in the library. The trees had started getting new, bright green leaves. Damon thought it was a fitting metaphor to represent the start of his new life. A few blocks away, Emmett was waving to a girl on a pink bicycle. It was Avery. She rode over to him and said hello. What's up, Avery? Emmett said. I got into two colleges in California. My parents and I are going on a trip to visit them both. I've got to get home and pack. With a bell-like laugh, she pedaled away. Just as Avery pedaled away, Emmett saw Damon walking toward him. Hey, Damon, did your computer ever get fixed? Did you check where you got in? I did. Damon's tone was relaxed. Emmett nodded. He took Damon's silence as not wanting to talk more about it. Right at that moment, Emmett's mom called to tell him the power was finally back on, so he rushed home. Damon also returned home. When he got there, his father was sitting at the kitchen table. His mother was cooking, and his sister Selena was standing at the door, waiting for Damon to get home. As soon as he opened the door, Selena rushed up and hugged him. You're back! Andrew quickly stood up, and Fiona ran over to him. She grabbed Damon's hand and asked, How did you do? How many places did you get in? Any good ones? Any we can afford? I got into one of the best universities in the country. Fiona instantly slapped her thigh and cried. What? Damon, are you serious? You better not be messing with us. Andrew's expression was also stiff. There was no way Damon could be telling the truth. He'd been expelled just a few months ago. Maybe Damon was trying to make a joke because he hadn't got in anywhere, and he was trying to use humor to soften the blow before he gave them the news. Damon took a deep breath but his tone was still a little shaky. No, I'm not kidding. I really did. I'm also getting two awards from the district. I'm the top science scholar. I got an email about it. Andrew and Fiona opened their mouths wide as if they had heard earth-shattering news. Andrew stammered, Damon, you're really being honest? Damon nodded. He was just as surprised as his parents were. Selena beamed with pride for her brother's accomplishment. She said with surprise, Damon, you're awesome. I knew you could do it. Andrew could tell his son was telling the truth. He reached out his hand and patted Damon's shoulder. Wow, congratulations, Damon. That's a huge achievement, Andrew said. There were tears in his eyes. 
Fiona also had tears rolling down her face. Selena pulled the whole family into a group hug. Damon and his family weren't the only ones reacting to the news. Mr. Thompson sat in his office at Jefferson High working on a Saturday. He was going over the senior class's test scores, grades, and college admissions decisions received so far. Mr. Thompson was worried. The students' files weren't looking very good. If they continued to do this poorly on the state-mandated testing, he was worried the school wouldn't get enough funding from the district. Not having the funding would only result in the students falling even further behind. Thinking of all this, he frowned and held his head in his hands. He couldn't help but feel like he'd failed. He glanced through students' files as if hoping they'd miraculously improve in front of his eyes. He sighed and absentmindedly opened his email. He had also received the email about Damon's award from the district. He was being recognized for high academic achievement and test scores, and he'd also been selected as the top science scholar. Jefferson High had never had a top science scholar before. Mr. Thompson was shocked. Mr. Thompson rubbed his eyes and read the email from top to bottom two more times. After making sure that his eyes weren't deceiving him, he stood up and walked around the room looking out the window. Then he thought of something, ran back to his desk to make sure that the email really was from the district, not someone playing a joke. It was the district's real email address. He didn't know what to make of this. He was thrilled, but also confused. He realized his heart was beating as if he'd just run a marathon. He took a few deep breaths to try lowering his blood pressure. Mr. Thompson looked up Damon's student profile and found that he'd also been accepted to one of the top universities in the country today. What great luck! I'm finally getting the bonus, Mr. Thompson thought. He couldn't help but remember when he'd accused Damon of cheating on the practice test. At that time, he'd been sure it was impossible for Damon to improve that quickly. But clearly Damon hadn't cheated. His scores on the real test had been high, and now he was getting awards. Mr. Thompson remembered how Damon's scores on the follow-up practice tests had gone down. Now that he thought about it, Damon must have done that on purpose so as not to arouse any more suspicion. Mr. Thompson couldn't believe his luck. He'd taken a chance letting Damon enroll at Jefferson after being expelled from Bridgerton, but it had paid off. He'd scored in the top 1% on the SATs. He'd gotten into one of the best universities in the country, and now he was the top science scholar. He was extremely happy. He couldn't believe Bridgerton had let a student of this level go. Sure, they had plenty of students who got into elite universities, but if they'd kept Damon, they could have had the top science scholar. Mr. Thompson thought Damon must have kept his true skill hidden at Bridgerton all along, just like he'd done after being suspected of cheating at Jefferson. Or maybe he'd panicked during his senior year and decided to put in the work to make up for lost time. He'd seen that happen with a few high school seniors before. Whatever the reason, he was glad he'd be able to let Damon enroll at the last minute. Bridgerton had missed out on a great student. Now that Damon had been selected as the top science scholar, Mr. Thompson probably had an even bigger bonus coming his way. Maybe he'd even get a promotion. Damon's success alone might bring up the average ranking of Jefferson, and maybe then they'd attract more good students from across the city, all because Mr. Thompson had taken Damon, one of Bridgerton's rejects. The more he thought about it, the more excited he became. But after sitting for a few minutes, he began to go into a negative thought spiral again. What if this had been a mistake? What if he'd gotten the email in error? Mr. Thompson took out his cell phone and called the district office. When he finally got someone on the phone, he asked them to confirm that Damon really was the recipient of the Academic Achievement Award and that he really had been selected as the top science scholar. When the person on the phone confirmed that the information was true, Mr. Thompson asked for confirmation two more times before he was satisfied. When the person on the other line patiently confirmed twice more, Mr. Thompson practically screamed his thanks. After he got off the phone with the district, Mr. Thompson wanted to call his wife. He thought about it and decided not to call her in the end. He would surprise her in person later. At Bridgerton High School, Mr. Ezra was going through his students' files as well, looking at their college acceptances and thinking about how they would affect the high school's rankings. To be honest, Mr. Ezra was quite satisfied with the results of this year's high school seniors. Several had gotten into top schools. He even poured himself a drink in celebration. 
The student who'd done the best was undoubtedly Veronica. She'd gotten into multiple top-tier universities. But many other students had also done very well this year. He'd had a great group of seniors this year, and he considered it a success. He would definitely be getting a bonus. As Mr. Ezra was happily thinking about how to use the extra money, his phone rang. It was his uncle, Gabriel Ezra. Uncle Gabe was on Bridgerton High School's board of directors. He was part of the reason Mr. Ezra had gotten the job there. On the phone, Uncle Gabe asked Mr. Ezra to come to his office. He didn't specify the details, but sounded upset. As he headed to his uncle's office, Mr. Ezra racked his brain thinking of what could possibly be wrong. They'd had such a good year. When he got back to Uncle Gabe's office, Mr. Ezra knocked on the door and went in. Uncle Gabe was drinking coffee at his desk while his assistant was filing some documents. Mr. Ezra smiled and said, Uncle Gabe, what did you want to talk about with me? Don't call me Uncle Gabe, call me Mr. Ezra, Gabriel said with a stern expression. But that's my name too, the other Mr. Ezra protested weakly. Gabriel was trying his best to suppress his anger. He shut Mr. Ezra down with a pointed look. Mr. Ezra shuffled uncomfortably on his feet, then said, Mr. Ezra, why did you call me here? Just tell me. Gabriel nodded. He opened his laptop and pulled up a file. He asked, Did you expel a student named Damon Walker earlier this year? Yes, why? What's the matter? Mr. Ezra had a bad feeling. Gabriel placed a cigarette between his lips and said to his assistant, Marjorie, you can go wait in the hall for a minute and close the door behind you. Marjorie nodded. She glanced at Mr. Ezra with a look of sympathy and closed the door. Once she'd left, Gabriel suddenly stood up. He yelled, That's all I needed to know. I don't want to see you in here again if you want to keep your job. Before Mr. Ezra could turn to leave, Gabriel picked up a stack of books on his desk and threw them at him. One of the books hit Mr. Ezra in the kneecap and he crouched down in pain. Uncle Gabe, listen to me. What happened? You haven't even told me. What did I say about calling me Uncle Gabe? And if you don't know what happened, you're obviously not doing your job. Gabriel was so tired of his incompetent nephew's blunders, he turned his laptop around to face Mr. Ezra and said, Take a good look at that. Why did you do it? You put Bridgerton High School's 20-year plan in jeopardy. That's what... Mr. Ezra trembled as he tentatively walked forward to look at the laptop. He saw that on the screen there was a list of the top scholars in each subject area. All the top scholars were for Bridgerton High School except one. The top science scholar was from Jefferson High. Mr. Ezra was surprised that the top science scholar had come from Jefferson, a much worse high school than Bridgerton. But what surprised him even more was that the top science scholar's name was Damon Walker. It was the student he'd expelled at the beginning of the year. Mr. Ezra's heart skipped a beat when he saw that. He looked back at Uncle Gabe's gloomy face and stammered, Is that... Get out! Gabriel gritted his teeth. He wanted to kill his nephew sometimes. Last year, at the meeting of the board of directors, Gabriel had proposed the Bridgerton High School 20-year plan for growth and improvement. The plan was supposed to guarantee that all top scholars in the district would come from Bridgerton every year. That would guarantee a rise in Bridgerton's national ranking. This year was the first year of the 20-year plan, and they hadn't managed to reach the goal. When he'd seen that the one outlier was from Jefferson, Gabriel had almost laughed out loud. When he saw that the student was the one who his nephew had expelled, Gabriel had been overcome with anger. This student who Bridgerton had painstakingly nurtured and poured resources into for three years had actually been pilfered by Jefferson High. How could his nephew have let that happen? He'd immediately launched an investigation into what could have happened. Had some kind of trade occurred where a student from Jefferson had been exchanged for this one? Had a teacher from Jefferson bribed his nephew? Had someone blackmailed him? This was a huge blow. To have Bridgerton High School lose one of the top scholar spots, not just to any high school, but to a notoriously low-ranking one, was a humiliation. The school's reputation would suffer. They'd fall even further behind on the 20-year plan. Gabriel's reputation as a board member would suffer. His paycheck might shrink. And now his nephew sat here in his office, acting clueless, as if he didn't understand how this had been caused directly by his actions. 
Sometimes Gabriel didn't understand how he could be related to this boy. How could he have given the Provincial Science Scholar to Jefferson for free? Did he even have a shred of intelligence or common sense? The more he thought about it, the angrier Gabriel got. He didn't want to see his nephew's face anymore, so he ordered him to leave. Mr. Ezra walked out of the office obediently, still shocked and slightly confused. He stood in the hall outside his uncle's office in a daze. He remembered expelling Damon. He'd caused all kinds of problems in the school and had even been a distraction to other students. He was bringing the school-wide GPA average down. He thought he was doing the right thing, saving the school's reputation by expelling the boy. He'd been certain of it. Damon hadn't been on track to amount to anything, so how had he suddenly ended up as the top science scholar? Was the district playing a joke on him? This had to be some kind of fluke. To think that earlier today, he'd been so happy. If Bridgeton had stayed on track with a 20-year plan, Mr. Ezra would surely have been promoted. But now, he feared his job was in danger, especially now that his uncle was so angry. How could he have made a mistake like this? Was there some sign he'd missed in Damon's life? His heart was filled with pain and anger. He silently cursed Damon's name. How had a student on such a bad path ended up turning things around so quickly? Surely the district had overlooked the first part of his record. But his uncle had already called and checked that the district hadn't made a mistake. Mr. Ezra felt miserable. Even if the district hadn't caught on to his antics, Damon must have cheated. There was no way he could have improved so much in such a short time. Mr. Ezra remembered his scores had been average at best when Damon was a Bridgeton student. Mr. Ezra was so angry that he cursed. He felt like crying, but no tears came. Gabriel heard his nephew cursing in the hall and opened the door to yell at him to leave again. But Mr. Ezra was still standing right in front of the door, so when Gabriel opened it, he hit Mr. Ezra in the back, causing him to lose his balance. Gabriel's office was located right in front of a flight of stairs. Unable to keep his balance, Mr. Ezra tumbled forward, rolling down the entire flight of stairs until he landed at the bottom with a thud. The impact had completely knocked the breath out of him. Soon enough, the news about Damon being the top science scholar had spread among the students. After school one day in April, Damon, Liam, and Emmett were riding their bikes through the neighborhood, enjoying the spring weather. They biked down to the East River and stopped there to hang out. As they sat watching the water, Liam suddenly said, Damon, I can't believe you're the top science scholar in the district. Damon just shrugged and nodded. Yeah, it was a surprise for me too. Emmett, who hadn't heard the news yet, looked at Damon with a shocked expression. Damon was the one who'd beaten Bridgeton High out of the last top scholar spot? He couldn't believe it. Damon pulled out his phone to show Liam and Emmett a photo of him accepting the award at the district awards ceremony. It had even been written up in a local online news site. He showed them that report as well. After a short period of shock, Emmett congratulated Damon warmly, and Liam fist bumped him. The April 15th deadline was coming up for them to decide which universities they would attend. As they walked along the river, Emmett asked the other two where they planned to go. Damon planned to enroll at Meyerson University. Liam had also wanted to go to Meyerson, but he hadn't gotten off the waiting list yet, he wanted to study medicine, and he wasn't sure which school was best. No matter where they ended up, they were all looking forward to starting fresh in college. When Damon returned home, he saw that there were a few local reporters around his house. This time of year, they were very into reporting feel-good stories about underdog students who'd found success. One of them rang the buzzer, and when Damon's father answered, she asked, May I ask if Damon is home? Would he like to do an interview about getting into university? Damon's father came down to meet Damon so that he could politely decline the reporter and ask that she come back another time. When Damon got upstairs, she saw a lot of mail addressed to him on the kitchen table. One was a check from the district. The top scholar prize came with a small amount of money to put toward college. He also had several brochures from other schools where he'd been accepted, all inviting him to enroll. A few minutes after Damon returned, his father got a call from another local reporter who wanted to know if Damon took brain drugs. May I ask, sir, how Damon improved so quickly? Can you share your experience? Did he take some type of performance-enhancing steroid? There's something new the kids are getting from the black market these days. Damon's father hung up the phone, a confused expression on his face. Damon? He said, this is getting out of control.
Ever since Damon had become provincial champion of the college entrance examinations test, he had been offered multiple scholarships. In addition to the prize money from the district, he also got an education award from the state that was deposited directly and could be used at any university. He also got a merit-based scholarship from Meyerson University that covered almost all of his tuition. Damon's district prize money and his state award added up to $5,000, a large sum of money for the Walker family to get at once. Damon offered his parents the money to use for their expenses, but they refused, saying Damon had earned the money and he should use it for his education. But Damon insisted his parents take it. Meyerson had covered almost all his tuition and scholarships anyways. He wanted his parents to use it to have a more comfortable life and give his sister some extra things for the new school year coming up. Damon's parents resisted, but eventually agreed to take the money when Damon said he could cover the rest of his tuition with money he'd earned from programming with Will on the side. He refused to accept his parents' rejection of his help. Once he'd graduated and the summer break began, life became more normal again. Reporters stopped calling to talk to Damon, and neighbors no longer congratulated him when they saw him on the street. After a few weeks, Damon even began to forget about the top science scholar. He just felt like a normal kid again. Over the summer, Damon hung out with Liam and Emmett, wrote songs, and played guitar, and also continued attending the computer programming classes at the training center. Damon was no longer really a student in the class because he'd learned everything the center could teach. Instead, he worked together with Will to design software. Will was very impressed with Damon. Will had been a programming prodigy himself, but even he hadn't been able to learn as quickly as Damon had. In just a few months, Damon had upgraded from a student to a partner. When they worked on games, Damon often improved Will's own code, fixing bugs and adding new effects Will hadn't considered. Will thought Damon definitely had a future in the gaming industry. Will had graduated that spring from the local university he'd been attending and was set to go to Meyerson for graduate school in the fall. He was going to continue to study programming. He was supporting his studies with work and his income was pretty good. Having Damon as a partner increased his efficiency and Damon's creativity boosted his business. With Damon's help, Will had designed a software plugin that was really taking off. He'd even been invited to work at various software companies, but he made more money freelancing, especially with Damon's help. Will asked Damon if he wanted to become a full-time partner over the summer. Damon didn't explicitly reject Will's invitation, but he also didn't explicitly agree to it. Damon indeed needed money, and Will paid him well. Damon worked for him for a month and made $5,000. He stayed on another month and he made another $5,000. To Damon, this was an almost unimaginably huge sum of money. After growing up in a struggling family, he felt a huge sense of relief to be able to earn so much. Damon knew that his mutation would bring him many benefits. The problem was, how could he make good use of it? Will mostly made plugins, but he wasn't sure that was what he wanted to do. Damon really wanted to break into the gaming industry. That was his long-term plan. He already had an idea for a game, but it wasn't totally fleshed out yet. Damon needed more training and needed to learn more about the gaming industry too. He also wanted to keep working with Will to make even more money. On an off day from work, Damon wrote another song, but he wasn't satisfied with it. It wasn't as good as Time Flies had been. This made Damon realize that even though his brain was enhanced, he still couldn't just sit down and write a hit on a whim every time. Songwriting was an art. No wonder people who only had a few top hits in their lives still became famous. When Damon was bored, he also did weight training. After three months of training, Damon's strength had improved a lot. Now he felt that he would be able to fight 10 people at once without any problems. One summer day during a thunderstorm, Damon also accidentally discovered that he could control electricity. Ever since that discovery, He'd been trying to hone the skill, but he hadn't made much progress. By the end of the summer, Emmett had gotten off the waiting list for a top medical university, and Liam had decided to go to Boston Technology Institute. BTI was a second tier university, but it had some very good programs. It was also located in Boston near Meyerson, where Damon was going. In the end, all three were happy with their choices. Damon was still shocked that he'd been able to get into Meyerson but being the top science scholar must have made up for the less than perfect record of his earlier high school career. When Will found out that Damon would also be going to Meyerson, he was very surprised. He hadn't known that Damon had been selected as the top science scholar. 
Will was extremely happy that he and Damon would be at the same school in the fall. They'd been great collaborators over the summer, and he looked forward to continuing their work. The rest of the summer passed quickly, and soon it was time for the start of the semester. At the end of August, Damon and Liam headed to Boston, excited for a bright new future. Liam and Damon's fathers were supposed to go along to drop them off at college, but the two young men insisted they could go alone. Their families agreed to let them travel to school by themselves as long as they called as soon as they arrived. Liam and Damon had barely been out of New York City, and they were excited to see Boston. As they passed some buildings and monuments he'd only seen in books, Liam excitedly pointed them out. Their school campuses were pretty close, so close it was easy to walk between them. Both campuses were huge, but Meyerson was slightly bigger. They stopped at Liam's first school. All the buildings looked new and clean. After Damon helped Liam move into his dorm, he said goodbye and headed to Meyerson University. Compared to Liam's school's campus, the Meyerson University campus looked older and more stately. The gate at the front was covered in tendrils of ivy and looked like something out of the last century. In the middle of campus, there was a towering tree. The campus was decorated with colorful balloons and banners welcoming new students. Probably because of its tech focus, Meyerson University was known for having an imbalanced gender ratio. There was a slightly larger number of male students than female students. Because of that, there was a lot of competition for girls between the boys on campus. Damon carried his bag as he walked down the pathway that led to the office where he was supposed to check in. He walked among other new students as well as returning ones. The returning talked together in groups, while the new students looked slightly intimidated. Some of the girls saw that Damon was tall and handsome, and they wanted to approach him. But when they saw his hand-me-down clothes, they avoided him. After Damon finished checking in and received his student ID and the key to his room, he walked towards the dormitory. His room number was 502. The dorms here were still segregated by gender, so Damon would be living among only boys. The road leading to the dormitory was lined with trees and filled with very fashionable young people. They had an alluring, scholarly air about them. As Damon arrived at his dorm, he happened to bump into a couple, quarreling. The boy was handsome and he was also very tall. Because the girl had her back to Damon, he couldn't see what she looked like, but her clothing looked very fashionable. She was wearing mini jean shorts and a crop top and had long legs. Even from behind, she looked very beautiful. Damon couldn't take his eyes off her. He heard the girl say, Darren, we just got to campus and you're already kissing other girls. By the tone of the girl's voice, Damon could tell the guy was in real trouble. Darren quipped, Fiona, you can stop being so dramatic. Yvette and I were just having lunch. You're still going with that lie? I saw you kissing her. Fiona stamped her foot. She was extremely angry. Fiona, you're being crazy. I'm not being crazy. You're just not owning up to what you did. Fine, I can play that game too. I'll go have lunch with another boy. After saying that, Fiona turned her head around. The first thing she saw was the dumbfounded Damon. Come here. Fiona gestured at Damon. When Fiona turned around, Damon finally saw her face and couldn't help but marvel at her beauty. She was somehow different from Veronica and Avery. There was a trace of wildness to her beauty. When she called Damon over, it sounded like a command rather than an invitation. Damon looked around and found that there was no one else in the vicinity. After he confirmed that he was the one she'd spoken to, he asked, Um, what do you want? Fiona didn't say anything. Darren was amused. Fiona, do you see what he's wearing? Those are obviously knockoffs. Fiona walked over to Damon, grabbed his hand, and stomped her feet. I don't care. You left me, so now I'm finding someone else. This is your fault. Whatever, fine. Go out with this guy, but don't expect him to pay for the date. He clearly can't afford it. Darren gave Damon a disdainful look and left. Darren, come back. I didn't say you could leave. Fiona watched Darren walk away. She was so angry and hurt that tears pricked in her eyes. She finally turned her head and looked at Damon with a flash of determination. What's your name? What dorm are you in? Damon was annoyed by Fiona's condescending expression. He said lightly, My name is Damon. I'm in dorm 12. What do you want? Okay, listen, from now on, you're my boyfriend. You'll be coming with me to the movies, going shopping, eating with me, and working out with me. Do you understand? Under other circumstances, 
Damon would have been thrilled to be asked out by a girl like Fiona, but in this case, it was clear she was just using him. Although Fiona was beautiful, Damon resented the way she was treating him. I don't have time for all of that, go ask someone else. After saying that, he walked away, dragging his luggage behind him. Damon looked back and saw Fiona put her hands on her hips. She called out after him, How could you refuse me? I'm way out of your league. You could never get a girl like me on your own. Damon was wearing cheap clothing and his suitcase was falling apart. Fiona was rich and beautiful. He should count himself lucky that she'd even spoken to him. How dare he reject her? Fiona's angry rebuke attracted the attention of the surrounding students. Some of them were envious of Damon, but most who saw the whole process wore pitiful expressions. They could tell by his clothes and his demeanor that Damon wasn't on the same level as Fiona. There was no way Fiona really liked Damon. She was obviously just using him. Even if he'd said yes, Fiona would drop him as soon as Darren came back to her. Damon ignored Fiona's shout and dragged his suitcase toward the dormitory. Seven people lived in each dorm unit. In each unit, there were seven bedrooms, three bathrooms, and one common room. When Damon walked into number 502, there was a boy reading quietly in the common room. There was also another boy whose hair was dyed green playing stars on an iPad. Damon was tired. He quickly sat down and drank some water from his water bottle. Then, he put his suitcase beside the couch, unexpectedly, just as he sat down. The boy with green hair, whose name was Graham, jumped up. Hey, get your dirty bag away from the couch, you idiot. Damon jumped in surprise. Graham looked at Damon like he was scum. Do you know how much this costs? My parents got it brand new. Your parents' whole annual salary probably couldn't pay for this. Damon was surprised and offended. Chill out. Fine, I'll move the suitcase. Why do you have to be so aggressive about it? If you want me to chill out, then don't put your gross bag near my expensive couch. You're going to have to pay me back if it gets dirty, Graham said. Damon moved the suitcase and said, Dude, you seriously need to calm down. Graham was about to speak again when the door suddenly opened. A tall, sweaty guy rushed in. Graham saw him and smiled. Xander, back from playing basketball? Xander nodded. He glanced at Damon in stunned arrogance. Then he grinned and laughed. So this idiot is our last roommate? Damon said, I'm the idiot and you're the one insulting someone you don't even know? Seems like a good way to get beat up to me. Damon was always nice to people when he first met them, but that didn't mean he was a pushover. He was only kind to people until they gave him a reason not to be. He didn't let himself get walked all over. He felt no obligation to be kind to these two guys now that they'd insulted him. Damon stood to his full height and a fierce look flashed in his eyes. Though he tried to hide it, Xander was clearly intimidated. He even backed up a little. Damon ignored them. The other boys in the room still hadn't said anything. When Damon walked over to him, he said hello in a friendly manner. Damon chatted with him and found out that his name was Quinn and he was from Kentucky. While chatting with him, Damon found out that Quinn had also been ostracized by the other roommates. They'd called him a country bumpkin. It seemed that the roommates were going to be divided into two camps. While Damon and Quinn were chatting, Hector and Xander were also talking loudly. Xander pointed at Damon. He then loudly mentioned Fiona and Darren. Damon could tell what they were talking about. They were discussing what had happened downstairs and were insulting him. Sure enough, Xander said, How could a guy like him think he had a chance with Fiona? He really is an idiot. Yeah, what was he thinking? The two of them laughed. Damon glanced at them coldly and didn't say anything. A few minutes later, another boy opened the door and came into the room. His name was Theo. When he walked in, he said hello to everyone. Although Damon had his guard up because of how Xander and Hector had acted earlier, he still greeted Theo warmly. That night, Theo proposed that they all have dinner together. Graham didn't want to because he thought Theo's attitude was arrogant, but Xander convinced him to come. Xander didn't want to make too many enemies right away, especially because they already weren't on good terms with Damon and Quinn. He was starting to regret that because he didn't want to be isolated in college. The six of them found a restaurant. Theo loudly said that it was his treat, then ordered them beer using his fake ID. Theo was unrestrained by nature, and he didn't even notice the conflict between the others. After drinking some beer, they started telling each other about their hometowns. Then, they started talking about girls. The atmosphere suddenly became lively. Theo said that there were an equal number of girls and boys in their incoming class, which was rare for Meyerson, so they were lucky. Quinn said he'd met a pretty girl right when he got to campus. He'd heard that she was majoring in broadcast journalism, which made sense because she was really charismatic. 
Hector shook his head and looked at Quinn disdainfully. I saw that girl too. You have bad taste. I also met a girl. She's actually pretty. Xander's eyes lit up. What's her name? What's her year? What's her major? Hector exaggeratedly gestured. She's a freshman, like us, and she's majoring in finance. I heard her name is Veronica. Apparently when she got to campus, like 20 boys rushed up and offered to carry her luggage. They almost got into a fight because of her. Hector tried his best to convey how beautiful the girl he'd met was. Xander looked at Hector with an expression of disbelief. Hector became anxious. If you don't believe me, you can ask Mark. Mark's a second year and he was there. He saw her. Even some of the boys who have girlfriends are planning to break up with them and go after Veronica. That's how pretty she is. Xander and Theo started asking questions rapid fire. Even Quinn leaned over to listen. Only Damon remained silent, because when he heard the name Veronica, his heart stirred. Was it THE Veronica from back home? She'd said she was applying for Meyerson University. She'd even gone on a campus visit. And with how well she'd done in school, of course she'd gotten in. They were actually at the same college. Veronica's beautiful, charming face appeared in Damon's mind, and he barely heard the conversation around him. Of course, Veronica would be surrounded by boys as soon as she set foot on campus. Here, she'd have her pick. To Damon, Veronica was basically a goddess. She'd easily been the prettiest girl at Bridgeton High School, and now she was certainly one of the prettiest girls at Meyerson. Damon had an impulse to contact Veronica. It was hard not to take this all as a sign from fate. But then he came to his senses. Wherever Veronica went, she stood out. The same couldn't be said for Damon. With all the boys to pick from here, would she really want anything to do with him? The boys were certainly much richer than he was, but he wondered if she'd remember him saving her in the river. Since they were at the same college, it was only a matter of time before Damon and Veronica would meet. All Damon needed to do was orchestrate a way to make it happen sooner rather than later. The next morning, the last roommate showed up. He was from California, and his name was Levi. He was unusually handsome and had a gentleness about him. He carried a guitar on his back and had a ponytail. He looked like someone who wrote love songs. Levi would definitely be popular among the girls. Levi didn't talk much. He liked to play the guitar quietly in his room. He was cool and he knew how to respect others. He always asked before he played guitar to make sure no one would be disturbed, and he didn't play too late at night. It seemed that Levi had received professional training in music. Even Damon admitted that Levi's guitar skills were very good. His voice was also very good. It had a magnetic quality and a slight husky sound. It was very special. It turned out that Levi's dream was to become a star in the music industry. However, his parents wanted him to study finance. He'd begrudgingly signed up for the finance major, but that didn't change his goal of becoming a singer. After a few days, all the roommates had gotten to know each other, but that was only the beginning of their college life. Walking around campus, Will had kept an eye out for Damon. He hoped that Damon would join his plug-in workshop. The plug-in that Damon had made for Will during the summer had already been imitated by other large studios. Will's profits had dropped substantially. After a few days on campus, Damon remembered Will's invitation to continue working with him. After paying the tuition fees that his scholarship hadn't covered, he didn't have much money left over. Also, his dad had recently gotten hurt at work. The injury wasn't too serious, but he would be out of work for a while, and he'd also racked up some high medical bills. Damon wanted to help his parents out with that, so a few days after moving into his dorm, he texted Will, who was extremely pleased. Will invited him over right away. Will rented a private office space off campus for work. The office, which was more like a studio, was very simple and crude. Including Will, only four staff members worked there in total. This was the first time Damon had been to Will's office. He discovered that although Will had developed a plugin for one popular game, the rest of the games he developed plugins for weren't very popular at all. After looking around, Damon asked, Why don't you guys make plugins for some more popular games that have just been released? Will smiled bitterly. We want to, but once popular games are released, all kinds of plug-in studios across the country start making things for them. Being such a small office, we can't really break into that with all the competition. Seeing Damon frown, Will paused for a moment and then said, We do make plugins for some less popular new releases, but 99% of new games fail before they even really get off the ground. As in, no one plays them at all. If we make plugins for those, trying to corner the market early since their new releases, 
it might amount to nothing if the game ends up failing. A small studio like his simply couldn't afford to waste time and resources that way. A major failure could instantly crush a small studio. Damon nodded. He already had some ideas. He walked around the studio and gave a few suggestions about projects they were currently working on. For the next few days, Damon paid special attention to some of the games that were going to be released soon. One of them was an RPG called Heaven's War. The open beta version was out already, and it attracted Damon's attention. Damon tried it for a few days and even took some time to study its selling points. He had a feeling it was going to be huge. It had all the elements of a great game. If he could develop a plugin for Heaven's War, he was sure it would succeed. But how could Damon convince Will to develop it together? After all, he would need Will's team's cooperation both to create and maintain the plugin. Damon didn't have the energy or the equipment to do those things alone. But Will had already explained why he didn't do projects like this to Damon. Damon didn't think he'd be easy to convince. He decided he'd try to develop the plugin on his own, then get Will to join him once he'd made a start. Maybe that way Will would agree. Damon began to develop the plugin on his own in his free time. He was also slowly getting used to university life and had started getting along better with his roommates, except for Hector, Graham, and Xander. They were rich and arrogant. Levi was the only one they liked. Levi seemed to be from a well-off family as well, and it turned out he was from LA, which gave him cool points in their eyes. They talked about all kinds of famous people, fashion, the movie industry, and so on. Levi was the only one who could talk to them. Levi was handsome and talented, but he was also very quiet. He could chat with anyone, but he always seemed to maintain a certain distance between himself and others. It was as if no one could really get close to him. Theo slowly realized that Xander and Graham looked down on the rest of the roommates. He gradually distanced himself from them and started hanging out more with Damon and Quinn. Quinn liked to play ping pong, and Theo and Xander liked to play basketball. Damon also liked to play basketball, but he didn't want to play with them. Besides, he didn't have time. He was too busy trying to create the plug-in for Heaven's War. When Hector had nothing better to do, he would play stars in his room. He was all right, but compared to Damon, he was trash. Damon could defeat him with one hand tied behind his back. Levi, on the other hand, would play the guitar and sing songs when the others weren't around. Levi sometimes wrote his own songs, although in Damon's eyes, his work wasn't that impressive. Most people thought he was great. He sang his own songs and played the guitar. Coupled with his handsome appearance, this was lethal to girls. After a few weeks on campus, some of the girls found out what dorm Levi lived in and snuck in. Every time they saw the girls leave looking disappointed, Theo and Quinn couldn't help but look at Levi with resentment. Theo even sometimes tried to hit on the girls himself, saying, Ladies, he doesn't know what he's missing, but I'm here. I'm single. I'm picking up what you're putting down. But all he got in return were contemptuous looks from the girls. Though he wouldn't admit it, that hurt Theo. He looked at himself in the mirror every day. Was he really that bad looking? When Damon was almost ready to show Will the start he'd gotten on the plug-in for Heaven's War, it was close to the middle of autumn. Around that time of year, Meyerson always had a celebration for new students. As a part of the celebration, a few students from every major were supposed to perform on stage. And after that, there was always a basketball game. At that point in the semester, the various club activities in the school would start having events. The mid-fall celebration was a chance for new students to show off their talents. For example, Levi was good at singing and playing guitar, while Xander was good at basketball. Comparatively speaking, Damon and Hector were probably the least outstanding members in number 502, possibly even all of dorm 12. Outside of going to class, Damon spent most of his time fiddling with the computer in the dormitory. He was programming. He was also perfecting his plug-in. He hoped this would help set him on the right track for a successful future. Of course, no one saw the work he was doing, so it looked like he was doing nothing. He didn't stand out much on campus. At Meyerson University, where geniuses were everywhere, being the top science scholar in his district back home didn't mean much. The only thing that caused a disruption in Damon's routine was one time when Fiona came over to him in the dining hall and bought a bottle of mineral water for Damon in front of everyone. Students were buzzing about that news for a few days. After all, compared to Fiona, who had just arrived at the school and was already known for her beauty. Damon was a nobody. Countless people were speculating about why Fiona had bought him a drink and how she even knew him. What did Fiona possibly see in him that made her act that way? 
But after Hector and Xander spread the news about what had happened between Fiona and Damon on the first day on campus, everyone's admiration for Damon quietly turned into sympathy and ridicule. When Fiona's best friend heard about why Fiona was chasing Damon, they all told her to stop. He wasn't as cute or successful as Darren. However, Fiona was stubborn. She insisted on continuing to pursue Damon. She wanted to see how long Damon could pretend to ignore her. Veronica and Levi were selected to perform at the Mid-Autumn Festival. Because of their beauty, both Veronica and Levi were already well known on campus. Some girls even secretly called Levi Prince Charming. At the celebration, Veronica played a piano piece. She was dressed in a plain white dress and her long hair was draped over her shoulders. She looked noble and elegant like a fairy who had fallen into the mortal world. When she appeared on stage, a wave of commotion rippled through the crowd. Damon had always known Veronica was good at singing, but he didn't expect her to be so stunning when she played the piano. When the song ended, she received a standing ovation and thunderous applause. Veronica instantly became even more popular than she already had been. All the boys definitely noticed her at the performance. Levi's performance also got a great reaction. His devilishly handsome appearance, that magnetic voice, the original song, and his carefree guitar playing were enough to make all the girls in the crowd go crazy. Some people even said that Levi and Veronica should date. They would be a power couple for sure. Even the chair of Meyerson's music department, Dr. Lauren Jones, noticed Levi's talent. Dr. Jones was a very talented musician, and she'd become the department chair in her early 30s. When Dr. Jones heard Levi sing, she was so impressed that she reached out to him the day after the celebration. She hoped that Levi could participate in the upcoming National University Singing Competition. This competition was held once every three years, and all the singers from the music department would participate. Those who placed would have opportunities open up for them. The National University Singing Competition was a big deal. Multiple students who had won the competition had gone on to become famous musicians. When Levi was invited by Dr. Jones to sing in the competition, he was very surprised. But making a name for himself in the music industry had always been his dream. Because of that, Levi cherished this opportunity very much. After agreeing to Dr. Jones's invitation, Levi couldn't wait to start preparing for the competition. 